spasticity. It's a condition in which certain muscles are continuously contracted, causing stiffness, and that can interfere with normal movement, speech, and gait. Now, here to tell us about the spasticity, Karina Levomiti, Management Medical Mission, Drs. Paula Dawson of the University Hospital in Jamaica and Mark Gormley of the Gillette Children's Hospital in Minnesota. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Jamaica. It's morning time. Good morning, David. I'm going to start with you, Paula. Um, to kind of break it down in simpler terms, yes. what is spasticity? So spasticity is a type of muscle stiffness that right. you get with movement, and it's usually as a result of an injury to the central nervous system, which could be the brain or the spinal cord. We see it very commonly in children, cerebral palsy. You know, this is uh, Child's Month, mm -hmm. and so the team that's here uh, Mark, Dr. Gormley is from Gillette's Children's Hospital, but spasticity can occur in adults as at well. At any age. At any age, yeah. if you've had a brain injury, stroke, spinal cord injury, other neurological injuries as mm -hmm. well. And children who have cerebral palsy, who have now grown up, you know, they still continue to so have. So it's stiffness. Is it painful? It can be because the, the stiffness in itself is not painful. However, the stiffness can limit your movement. It can cause what is called contractures where you can't move the joint at all. Mm -hmm. It can cause joint deformity. It can uh, cause the, the, the spine to curve in a particular way, may affect your breathing. Mm -hmm. So it's a condition that you really want to treat early and effectively before it gets out of control. Yeah, well, luckily for us, Dr. Gormley is here um, <laughs> and they're on a medical mission to manage spasticity how well we have a couple of different things there in, uh, that we use in Jamaica mm -hmm. we have a surgery that's done by one of our uh, neurosurgeons Dr. Petronio and he works with uh, the neurosurgeons here Dr. Morgan and Bruce and they do a surgery on the lower part of the back and the spine and the nerves going to and from the legs and they cut uh, so many uh, of these nerves and it loosens up the legs and then we have a medication called phenol it's a form of alcohol and if you inject it on top of a nerve that's going to a muscle that's really stiff, it will loosen it up. And it does so temporarily, but it'll last about six months or so. Six it's, months is good. That is good. Yeah. yeah. yeah so and, you're uh, saying for people who have, who have had to live with this, um, there is relief. There is, because if you're able to move around, it makes a little bit more able-bodied and to do things that you probably wouldn't have been able to do. That's right. right. So yeah. you're here. Are you specifically coming to work with children? Or are you working Well, we with work with mostly with children. Mostly with children. And our, 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 our main mission is to deal in with the children here in Jamaica, but we work with adults as well. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of them are children that grew up to be adults and still have that stiffness. Yeah. Uh, but primarily we're working with children, but we do see a few adults. What's that experience like, Paula? Because to me, if, if, if you're someone who grew up with yes. that challenge, and then now as an adult, yes. you have the ability to fix it. Right. How? Right. But well, we want to kind of make it clear, though, uh, there are other steps that you start before you get to yeah, the there. injection and mm -hmm. the surgery. Mm -hmm. So the first thing is education. You have to educate the parents or the patient or caregivers how to manage, how so to stretch. So they understand what it is. Correct. How mm -hmm. to stretch, how to position to prevent deformity. And then, of course, therapy, physical therapy, occupational therapy, where whereas you know you work on the stiffness, you educate the patients, teach them how to stretch, how to position. And there's a medication that we use called baclofen, among others, but the one that we have available here is called baclofen, which helps relax the muscles. Now, so there, there are things that you can do. I had, right. There are things that you can now, do. Now, if you've had spasticity for a long time and you now have deformity and now you have what we call contractures where the joints just can't move, the injections alone will not help. Right. Because you get to a point where movement might be so limited that you may require another level of treatment, which is surgical. Mm -hmm. we, this is where we incorporate the, the um, orthopedic surgeon like Dr. Saw mm -hmm. and, and Dr. Amarelli, Dr. Palmer, and Dr. Samis at the University Hospital. Dr. Or Saw. Saw. Mm, all right. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, he I, was I, destined I, to be an orthopedic I had to, yeah, I had to. No, so, so, so but I'm saying even still, because yes. uh, Doc has been coming here for a while, and you've yes. been doing this program for a while. Ten years. What, yeah, what has the impact been on Jamaicans who at one point probably felt, um, you know, I have to live with this as it is. But no, they have an opportunity yeah. to be a little bit more mobile, yes, yes. to do more things they thought they probably couldn't yes, do. Yes. What has so the it's a, been? it's a team approach, and we work with the physiotherapists and uh, the pediatricians. And I was talking with the head of the pediatrics department at UW Dr. Melbourne Chambers, and sh you know we were all commenting on the change in the faces of our children with oh, cerebral yes. palsy because you know years years ago before we had some of these medications and treatments available, kids were were more deformed. An important part of the program is bracing 
where the team brings down uh, braces that no cost to the patient. So ba braces can help to keep your foot in a particular position oh. to prevent you from going out of shape for want of a better description. Okay. And so we're not seeing as much deformity as we did years ago. ago. Yeah, wow. and, and the, I mean, there's not one patient <coughs> family mm -hmm. that is not happy. Yeah. Every single one. This was 10 years ago, Doc. I know when you came 10 years ago, there are things you're doing now that we didn't do then. So it's been 10 years and we've evolved over those 10 years. Yeah, yeah. I would say that the treatments that we're doing and the children that has the potential of getting treatments here in Jamaica is some of the best in the world. Wow. Now, we have been able to develop some certain techniques for these treatments for spasticity. We're not able to cure the whole disease, but we're able to uh, minimize some of the impact that the cerebral palsy and other diseases has on a child. So we make their lives better, but we don't eliminate the disease. But some of the techniques that we've developed here are unique, and they're now being uh, transferred globally. globally. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so, it is. And so we're helping right the kids, here. but not just in Jamaica. That's right. The research, yeah, and, 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 research. and some of the things exactly. we've implemented has been able to help kids all over the yes. world. Yes. The, the environment that we've had here in Jamaica and the support that we've had here in Jamaica with the all the other healthcare providers uh, and administrators and uh, government agencies and all of that have helped develop these techniques that we're not able that we're using not only for the children here in Jamaica, but uh, uh, we're Everywhere. starting to use it worldwide. That's amazing. Yeah. It yeah. is. That's it's amazing. been it's been really over the last ten years. Yeah. It's been really valuable. Yes. Has the temperature had any impact? Like, do you find that in colder climes, it's a little bit more di different for people with spasticity in terms of how the cold affects the muscle and. Yeah, cold can make you stiffer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Cold. I mean, anybody gets cold can get, you yeah, know, can yeah, get a little yeah. stiffer. Yeah. Yeah. So the warm environment can help. Yeah, the warm environment help. And right, so, so yeah. I just wanted to say that the, the Spasticity Workshop, it started years ago out of a, an agreement with this guy called Waylon Richards, OSDJ, mm -hmm. and in agreement with the University and Mayo Clinic and the Associated Gillette's Children's Hospital. And then Ministry of Health came on board. I mean, they have supported us over the years. Um, Bustamante Hospital for Children and UWE, and uh, it's an amazing team, Dahlia. I mean, I, mean I, I keep telling the story of how happy I am, how much more improved some of our patients are. I have a story where we injected a, a lady once and she came back and she was like, she was very happy. I'm like, why are you so happy? She said, we can lap her now. I was like, what do you mean by that? Before her child's legs were crossed at the waist so she could only carry her like this. So we injected between the legs. So the legs open up now. She can carry her, her inside and, right. and carry a bag, the things that we take for granted. For granted. You know, we so don't think about those things. So yeah. Not everyone will walk, but it depends on our goals. But every single, we've done almost 50 surgeries on the spine. Yeah. Some kids walking who couldn't walk, some sitting who couldn't sit, some moving a little bit better. But every single parent, everybody's giver, life has been made everybody, better. Yeah. Everybody's life has been made And my better. life is better too as a medical rehab specialist, you know. You are able to have the tools, mm -hmm. which we were usually not able don't to have access. in Jamaica. Well, yeah. I know it's a passion for you, Paula. Every yeah. time I see Paula, if I see Paula a year before the workshop yeah. happens, doctor says, they're coming back next year. We have to talk about it. Yeah. So, so tell me a little bit about what's going to be happening this year. So the workshop started um, in terms of the so, mission itself. So we, we, we come here three times a year. So we okay. come here three weeks out of the year. One of the things I also want to mention is, is the physicians that come and the staff that comes are very dedicated. And uh, they're dedicated to uh, Jamaica and they're dedicated to the mission, uh, the mission. And all of the physicians have permanent privileges. We're all Jamaican physicians. Yes, please. Yeah. And <laughs> I see your Jamaica flag at the I top got my Jamaica flag right here, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think the first time I was supposed to come on here, I tied the tie and it, the Jamaican flag rolled over. I knew it was, uh, it was an omen. It was a good omen. <laughs> he hasn't tied the tie since. I haven't tied the tie since. I haven't. <laughs> I just unloosened it and put it over. <laughs> Thank God. So what's going to be happening? Um, how, many, how many people are we going to be seeing? Right, so we have to, we started on Monday. Monday we've been working. That's why Mike is a little hoarse because he's a little tired. tired. We worked oh. him like a horse yesterday. Yeah, they work really hard when I come down. We have to mention that her ex Excellency, the most honorable lady, Patricia Allen. She's the patron for the workshop. She and Minister Tufton were both at the University Hospital on Tuesday to do a walkthrough to welcome the team and to, you know, say hi to the local team and some of the patients. Uh, we This evening, we're having a reception just to, you know, acknowledge the team and say nice. thank you. And, uh, and that's basically it. Today, we're going to continue seeing some more patients. We did surgeries yesterday. Dr. Petronio worked until late last night. Yeah. And uh, so that's basically it. So we have treated a lot of patients, Bustamante, UE. We injected maybe about, I'd say, about 60 patients in all. Wow. And three, three children had, had um, surgeries. Wow. Yeah. This says it costs an average of approximately 
a million US dollars in a lifetime to Nine treat an individual with spasticity issues. With cerebral yeah. palsy. With yeah. cerebral with palsy. Cerebral palsy. Yes, yes. Um and most of our patients would never have a million US dollars. Well, so I the don't fact have that a million the mission US. is here mm -hmm. yeah. and they're able and they're not barred because of lack of money no, no. or anything else. It's just really a blessing. Yeah. It is a blessing. For you show them. up to clinic, we treat you. Yeah. Show up to yeah. clinic and, and the university hospital waives the user fee. Wow. And of course Bustamante, you know, there's no user fee. And mm -hmm. so we're just you know It's a great story of hope. Yes. It's a great story of hope because, you know, cerebral palsy for years is something that, that people have struggled with and they're yes. not sure. And when they're now yeah. able to see that this is something that I can, I can manage I and I can be better. And I just want to mention that uh, Dr. Petronio, the neurosurgeon, the pediatric neurosurgeon, of course, there's an exchange of knowledge because, you know, the university is an academic institution. Right. So our residents and our doctors here... And therapists are now learning. So when the mission leaves, information yes. is still left here. Yes. We want this to be sustainable long after we're gone. Mm -hmm. Yes. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Get some sleep. Yeah. I'm to make sure you I'll get, get some good get Jamaican home. food. I can and, stop. <laughs> and to the beach. Yeah. Yes. Go back with a tan. Yeah. Yes. All right. <laughs> Doctors Paula Dawson of the University Hospital in Jamaica and Mark Gormley of the Gillette Children's Speciality Healthcare in Minnesota. Yeah. All right, that's it for 10 Minutes to Your Health. We'll do it again next Thursday.